Welcome to TMI, Fatal Flights, Shiny New Toy. In Houston, Texas on December 8, 2021, a student pilot first flew a Cessna 172 Solo. Imagine his excitement. So ecstatic the young man purchased the airplane but lacked training in it. Just for reference, a student pilot may not fly alone. It's on the license. If an instructor doesn't approve the flight or the plane, the pilot is not permitted to fly. A student pilot is required to fly only during the day and keep a safe distance from the clouds. A cloudy or hazy day prohibits the student from flying. The 23-year-old was told by his instructor not to fly his recent purchase, but that didn't stop him. He took up the aircraft in the winter. He had not been trained in the airplane, was flying at night, and it was overcast. You can guess what happened. A rush that should be avoided. On the inaugural flight of his brand new amphibious sports plane, Baseball Hall of Famer Roy Halladay tweeted to his followers that he was flying his Icon A5, low over the water saying it was like flying a fighter jet. A fan wrote on Twitter that he needed to be careful. Despite his declaration that the plane behaved like a fighter jet, it was not. Although the aircraft has a sporty exterior, its interior is reminiscent of an antique car. With its detachable wings for convenient transportation, the A5 is powered by a high-tech propeller and designed for level recreational flying. Classified as a light sports plane, it was created to capitalize on new FAA regulations that established the sports pilot category. Although there are fewer training requirements for a sports pilot certification, the pilot is still subject to a great deal more restrictions than a regular pilot. The fateful Friday morning of November 17, 2017, the man started early. After towing the plane to a Florida beach, he started preparing for takeoff by putting on the wings, drinking alcohol, and taking a speedball combination of drugs. His antics went well beyond the capabilities of the aircraft. The Baseball Hall of Famer perished in a nosedive into the Gulf of Mexico four weeks later. The autopsy revealed that he had drowned to death. The pilot was careless to the profound and enduring sorrow of his friends, family, and admirers. Fulish Flight On October 14, 2015, a 52-year-old pilot was prepared to take his new aircraft home. He had an instructor license and 10,000 hours of flight experience in addition to his commercial pilot's license. However, aviation fuel got into the cockpit and sloshed around his feet during the first two takeoffs. Despite the fact that the United States makes up a sizable portion of the continent, people do buy planes on the other coast because flying home is simpler than driving. Simply hop from airport to airport, filling up along the way, until you reach your home airport. The pilot spoke with a mechanic at the third airport in Missoula regarding the fuel leak. The pilot reported to the mechanic that he had the fuel system inspected and nothing was found to be amiss. But the mechanic didn't think so. Quite understandably, he advised against flying until the problem was fixed. This veteran pilot said that although he would still be able to fly the aircraft, he would do so with the electrical system turned off out of consideration for safety. This is called instrument-free flying, or flying in the dark. Patrick's choice is particularly puzzling because the aircraft was just recently purchased and its reliability hadn't been proven yet. When the dangers of the fuel leak were brought to his attention, he responded, I got this. The plane then took off from Missoula International Airport, but it quickly turned, crashed, and burst into a ball of fire. According to the NTSB report, the pilot's failure to maintain sufficient airspeed while returning to the airport to address the fuel issue likely caused him to become distracted, which led to an aerodynamic stall or spin. Stalled. After participating in a week-long naval event on the 1st of October 2017, two seasoned military pilots took turns flying their aircraft as they flat-hatted, that is, 
maneuvered across the terrain at a high speed and low altitude. The men descended as low as 210 feet at incredible speeds, alternating control as they flipped the airplane to the 500-foot clearance regulation. The veteran pilot, 31, departed from the intended course and began a descending turn in order to show off terrain following maneuvers. Then he gave the plane back to the other pilot and told him to turn sharply right. But they were flying too low. The training aircraft stalled above the rising terrain due to slow reactions and erratic maneuvers. Too low to eject, both pilots perished in the resulting crash. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this.